Good morning, everyone. So we have some planty tasks that I need to take care of today, including moving my philodendron Paricio verde from the sphagnum moss that is currently in into my epiphytic soil. And I'm gonna be giving it a DIY rope type pole thing, and I'll explain that a little bit more when we get to that point. But there's definitely also a very interesting backstory as to why I even have that rope to use to do this. But before we get to that, I do wanna give you guys a little PSA update sort of situation because while I was eating breakfast, I was reading and responding to comments from you guys on some of my videos. And somebody did comment that they had just watched one of my videos in which I explain why I shake and that they were happy I had explained it because they had noticed that I shake but they had no idea why because they hadn't seen a video where I explained it before. So for those of you who are new or those of you who have been here for a while but haven't seen one of those videos in which I explain it, I do have something that is called essential tremors and it causes my hands to shake, my legs to shake, and sometimes even my head to shake. And it's outside my control. I try to be as steady handed as possible. Some days are better than others. Certain things make it worse than others. So for example, caffeine will make me shake more. If I wait too long to eat, it makes me shake more. So just know if you see that and you've kind of wondered what's going on, that is what is happening. It is not any kind of like, you know, horrible like disease or anything like that. It's just a neurological thing. It makes me shake and it's just something I've had to live with my whole life. And now you know. But before we get into transferring the philodendron Paricio Verde out of that sphagnum moss, there are some other things we need to do. I do have corms that I've been propagating for my Alocasia Bambino and one of them is ready to move into soil. So we're gonna take care of that first. So let's go ahead and move further into the kitchen and we'll get started. All right, you guys. So first of all, look how absolutely adorable this little corm baby is. I mean, come on, look at those tiny little leaves. How cute is that? And so we are just gonna be taking this up into a two inch pot because it is so small and I am gonna be using my forest floor soil mix and I had some left over from a previous project that I was doing last week. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this mix in the bottom of this pot and then we are gonna put that corm in there and start backfilling around it. And while we're doing that, let's have a serious conversation about something unplant related. That being the fact that it is already over a week into October and I still don't know what I'm gonna do for my Halloween costume. And I have set a history of expectations most recently last year with my Cruella costume. And the year before that, I actually won $50 in a costume contest with my voodoo costume here. And so I feel like I have set a very high expectation and I have no clue what I'm going to wear this year. None whatsoever. So if anybody has any ideas or suggestions, please drop a comment down below because at this point I'm kind of worried I'm not going to be able to throw anything together in time, but we'll see. I've got this corm almost all the way in here. I'm just going to add a little bit more soil and I am going to go ahead and give this a water down and I'm going to put it back under the glass that I've had over this glass, trapping in the humidity because I always find that leaving them in that extra humidity for a little bit longer period of time after potting them up really helps them to take off. So he is looking good to go. Let's go give him a quick water down and put him back above the kitchen sink. Okay, so now that that little guy is good to go, we can move on to our bigger project, which is gonna be moving the Philodendron Paricio Verde out of the sphagnum moss that it's currently in and into potting soil. And so I'm gonna set this stuff aside. And I do have some leftover of my epiphyte mix from the last video we used it in. So that is good to go for this project as well. And I'm gonna take this larger tray and I'm gonna use it to kind of put the sphagnum moss in as we're getting it off of this plant. So first of all, a little update. We have now gotten, let's see, one, two, and we're getting a third leaf starting to come in since I got this plant when I did my plant shop tour of cultivar down in Katy, Texas. And so that newest leaf right there, it hasn't fully hardened off yet. That's why it looks a little bit floppy. But as you can see, it's definitely way bigger than the other leaves and it's starting to get very defined lobes at the top. So super excited about that. And so far you guys, these leaves have been coming in a darker shade of green, but I did move it to a brighter, warmer location and they are now starting to get more variegated. I had read that heat kind of helps with this one to get the variegation to show up better. So I'm expecting these to get more of that white on them here in the next week. But right now I've just got it in this little cover pot. Let's take it out of there. And there's really not enough roots on this to necessarily warrant repotting it if it was already in like my epiphyte mix, but I just didn't wanna leave it in here for too long in this sphagnum moss. And there's also a lot of perlite in here as well. 
But I just didn't want to leave it in here too long because the more roots that get developed, the harder it's going to be to get all that sphagnum moss off of there. And I do know some people who will actually leave it in the sphagnum moss and then just do it like a plant plug into their other soil mix. But you guys know that I don't like mixing soil types like that. It just causes more problems than not in my experience. So I'm going to go ahead and try to loosen this up and get this plant out of this pot. And then we will slowly start to try to remove that sphagnum moss. And also since this plant is not completely fully rooted in this pot, we're probably just gonna go back into this exact same pot with the new soil, but we'll see. So we've got it out. I'm just gonna gently kind of knock off any kind of loose stuff off the top first. And then we will start trying to kind of separate the rest of the moss from the roots. And this is actually my first time having to take something from sphagnum moss into soil and having to try to remove the moss. I've heard from some people that it can be really difficult. I've heard from other people that it's not that difficult. I actually think the fact that there's so much perlite mixed in with this is probably gonna make it a little bit easier to separate, but I could be wrong, we'll see. So far, so good though. We're coming off fairly easily here. At least the loose parts are. And I will tell you, it is, I'm sure you guys can see, it's kind of hard to differentiate in certain places like the root from the moss, because right here is a root but it's almost the same color as the moss. And so I don't know if there's tiny offshoot roots attached to this or not. It's just really hard to tell because sometimes the moss can look kind of like little fine roots. But I'm gonna keep working at this until we can get as much of this off as possible. guys I think I've got this pretty well done here I did accidentally sever a couple of roots trying to remove the moss but all in all I think we're looking pretty good here we've got most of it off so I'm feeling pretty good about this so I'm gonna go ahead and move this tray out of the way bring our other tray back over so I can set this guy down gently here I'm gonna go rinse this out real quick so I can make sure I've got all of that moss residue out of there. And then we're gonna start adding in our epiphyte mix and getting this guy planted back up. And so we're definitely gonna stay in this size pot. I think this is actually a little bit bigger than a three inch pot. Maybe it's like a three and a half inch. It's not quite four, but these roots, and I will say they are very well developed. As you can see, they are like super duper white. They're beautiful. So this plant really shouldn't have too big of an issue adapting to the soil change, but there's still like, there's just not a lot of roots here. So that's why I'm gonna stay in this size pot. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start adding the soil mix into the bottom here. And then, like I said, we are going to be giving this guy a support pole, if you will, that we are gonna make here in a second, but I just wanna get him kind of set in here to hang out for a second while we do that. So he's not just like laying on the counter. So let's just get these roots kind of gently set down in here. There we go. And then I'm just gonna move him off to the side while we get this pole put together. So let me get this cleared out of the way. Let me rinse my hands off real quick. Okay, so basically what I decided I was gonna do here, I had a pair of just regular wooden chopsticks and I've basically just glued these together the bigger ends of them with a little bit of super glue last night just to make sure it would hold, which it did. So this gives us a nice little narrow pull, but it's a good height for that pot. So the other thing we're gonna do to this is we are going to attach this bit of rope. And so this actually is from one of my glass terrariums. You guys have seen my glass terrarium before that I have my air plants in in my kitchen. I had another one like that in my bathroom. It had been up on the counter for over a year. And one day Toby got up there and decided to knock it off for some reason. And so I saved the rope hanger that was attached to the top of that because I figured I could use it for something someday. And so that's what we're gonna use today. So I'm basically gonna leave exposed the bottom portion that's gonna be in the pot on here. And then we're just gonna use a little bit of hot glue to get this started. And then we're gonna just twine it all the way around as far up as we can go, glue the top part into place, and then we should be good to go. So let me just check this against the pot real quick so I can see how far up we need to start the rope. Okay, so we need to start it right about here. I do have the hot glue gun already heating up over here. It's actually dripped a little bit on my counter, but oh well. So from here, I'm just gonna give this, a, like I said, 
a little bit of a wrap around to get it kind of started and held in place here. And then I'm just gonna slip a dot of hot glue and try not to burn the crap out of myself while I do it here. So just a little bit of hot glue, just one little tiny dot right there to get this started. And then actually I'm gonna do a little bit more further up. Oh, you guys, my shakes are so bad today. I'm so sorry. I don't know what the deal is. Probably because this is something that requires like finite small motor skills. It's not like a big stick. So just bear with me here. I guess it's a good thing I gave you all that little PSA in the intro today. I really didn't realize I was gonna be this shaky. Okay, I think that hot glue is setting there. So now, like I said, I'm just gonna basically twine this around in just kind of like a spiral fashion, trying to make sure there's no gaps in between that shows the actual stick. And I'm also trying to make sure that the rope isn't trying to untwine on me, which it kind of is. So I just got to kind of keep it twisted together while I'm going around here. And so you guys can do this with like any type of rope, any type of stick, just an easy do it yourself pull here for this guy to attach to. And you know, I didn't want to do a full size pull because he's just not really big enough. And also he's still in that small pot. So that was going to be kind of a, an issue if I tried to do that. So that's why we're doing this smaller pull for now until he becomes a bigger, more well-established plant. So I'm almost at the top here. Okay, let me make sure my bottom is holding well. Okay, that's holding up pretty well. Hopefully, hold on, let me check it against the pot real quick. Okay, that's gonna work out well. So I will have a little bit extra at the top here. What I'll probably do is I'm just gonna leave it like that for now and I will go see if I can buy some more rope that's kind of like this somewhere to finish off the top. I could also just cut the top off, but you know, why do that And if I can find some rope to finish this off with? So if I can find some rope to finish this off with, that's what I'll do. But otherwise, I will just cut that part off. Let me get this glued down. Hopefully it will hold well in the end, even though this is all kind of frayed on the end, but we'll see if we can get it glued down well here. A little more hot glue. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna take this rubber band that I had holding the end together for while we were wrapping it around, and I'm gonna rubber band that around this just for now to kind of get it to stay in contact, or at least I'm gonna to try to rubber band it around, to get it to kind of stay in contact with that glue a little bit better till it fully sets. Oof, this is like nerve wracking. I feel like I'm gonna break something. Okay, not pretty on the end there, but like I said, it's just there to kind of hold that glue into place for now, so. Got this all together. It looks like it's holding pretty well. So as you can see, I mean, just a nice little kind of, kind of like a little jute pull for this guy to get started with. So let me get the hot glue gun moved back out of the way here, get our soil back over here and our plant back over here. And so I'm going to be, because there are so many roots in here, I'm just gonna be very careful. I'm gonna just kind of set him in here gently. And then I'm gonna try to feed this down in between the roots into the bottom of that little bit of soil that I already have in there. And actually you guys, to stabilize this a little bit more, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna grab his cover pot and set him in there because that's gonna help this not, you know, try to fall over or anything like that. I'm just gonna tuck these roots in very gently. All right, so here we go. And so I do think, I will say, he does not have like aerial roots. Oh, he does have an aerial root, I think, starting. Let me see. We do have an aerial root starting. It is on this side right here. So I am going to rotate him towards me and I'm gonna to try to get that stick down on that side so that he can start attaching to it. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> he's got like a big old root right below that. So I gotta to try to work my way around that. And then his stem is right under that. So this is gonna be a little bit tricky, but I think we're gonna be able to get it to work. All right, I'm hitting the soil now, so here. All right. We are to the bottom of the pot. I probably could have started the rope a little bit lower, but you know, he doesn't need to attach right away right now. Once he gets a few more nodes going on, he'll be right at the start of that rope and then that will be the perfect position for him to start attaching to. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling back in here. This is kind of a little bit of a tighter fill in than normal just because there are so many roots. It's gonna be a little bit trickier to get the soil in there, but some tricks for that I will show you as we go along. And so he's gonna be probably staying in this size pot for a good while right now, because like I said, the roots 
There was a good roots there, it was a good amount of them, but really not enough to warrant going up to a larger pot here for a while. And he will have a little bit of recovery period that he's gonna have to do now that he's gone through this whole transplanting process. But like I said, those roots are pretty healthy looking, so I'm pretty confident he's gonna bounce back really quickly. So one of the things I'm gonna do here in a second to try to make sure that I'm getting all the soil down in between all of the roots is I'm just gonna give him a light tap here on the counter to try to shake some of that soil down in there. And it definitely went down a little bit more, so we're gonna keep filling back in. I'll keep tapping periodically. And then if I need to, I will get my metal chopstick out and I will use that to help to work some of that soil further down in between all of those roots. And while I'm working on filling this back in, a little life update situation for you guys. Toby and I do actually have a roommate right now. One of my friends actually moved back here from Hawaii last week, so she's staying with us while she tries to find a new job and a new place to live, a new apartment. And so, yeah, we've got a roommate. Toby is infatuated with her completely. I am like happy she's here as well because last night while we were watching TV in the living room, out of nowhere, a giant cockroach started to crawl across the wall behind the TV. That's right, guys. I haven't seen one since I had the pest control done after the last cockroach incident. And I actually didn't see it first. She saw it first last night and was like, oh my God, there's a giant cockroach. And of course my first reaction was, are you freaking kidding me? But she handled it. <laughs> she handled it much better than I handled it. She basically said, give me something I can smash it with. I handed her a notebook and she went and smacked it right on top of it against the wall. And yeah, so definitely happy that she's here right now because you guys know I would have been like a whole freaking mess in that situation by myself. But one of the things that I think is interesting is even after she slapped that notebook against it, she then slapped her hand against the notebook again to make sure it was smushed, removed the notebook, it fell to the floor. We thought it was dead, but then when she went to pick it up to throw it away, apparently it was still alive. And that is why I don't do cockroaches. They will survive anything. But we're definitely happy to have her here. And if you're wondering like, wait, why did she leave Hawaii? Who would want to leave Hawaii? She had good reasoning for that. She kind of wants to be able to start her own business and buy a house and you know, housing and everything's super expensive in Hawaii. So she is back for very good reasons. And I know she's gonna rock whatever she does cause she's great at everything. So I've got this all filled in here. Let me give it one more tap just to make sure that we are fully filled in. And then I'm gonna pull it out so we can look and make sure for sure that we don't have any massive gaps around the roots. So let's see. Let's see, maybe on this side, we got a little bit going on on this side. So let me see here. I think I'm gonna have to use my, my chopstick. Actually, it might just be this piece of bark is blocking it. So let me get some of the smaller particles out of here and see if we can't get them worked down into there. And then I think we will be good to go. And also you guys, that sphagnum moss, it was slightly damp. It was not completely wet, it was not completely dry. And I think that's probably kind of the best way to go about it. I, I would be kind of worried if it was too dry. I don't know, I feel like maybe it would be harder to separate without tearing a root. And if it was too wet, I kind of feel the same way. Like it's just gonna be super clingy. I don't know. Now that I'm saying that out loud, maybe none of that makes sense. But I mean, it really wasn't too hard for me to remove it. So I think having it just slightly damp worked well. But if you guys have experienced doing it when it's completely dry or even more wet, and found it was easier, definitely comment down below and let us all know. And so I've got this in here again. Let's give it another little tap down. And let me pull it up and see if we're filled in now. That definitely is filled in now. All right, we're all, we're all good. We didn't have to use the chopstick or anything. But I am going to water this down here in a second because this was completely dry, so it definitely needs to be watered. So let's go and do that real quick. So I'm gonna get all of this cleaned up. All right, you guys, well, honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out and I'm super excited to see that each of these new leaves that's coming in on this plant are getting bigger and bigger. So before too long, we should be able to start attaching to this pole. And as usual, I'll be sure to give you guys updates as we go along. But thank you so much for joining me today. And if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.